Well, good morning, Lakeshore, and happy Easter. Our King has risen indeed, amen? We're so glad to have you joining us for Church Online, especially if this is your first time joining us. If this is your first time joining us, I hope that you do feel welcome and that you do feel a part of the service. And if you would like uh, to be uh, reached out to by a pastor, you can go ahead and just uh, message us on Facebook and we'll make sure that one of our pastors gets to you. But for now, Lakeshore, as you can tell, I'm joining you in my kitchen and I have my trusty great old cup of coffees. I'm assuming you guys probably have your drinks as well. Mmm, come on. Anyway, we're going to get started in just a few moments, but before we do, I have just a couple of quick tips for you. Tip number one, as you can probably guess already, is go ahead and grab your favorite cup of coffee, tea, hot chocolate, or whatever it is that you're drinking this morning, and make sure you get a nice sip of that. Tip number two, go ahead and just sing out loud and sing proud, just like you would if you were actually here at church. Invite God into your home, and he'll be there in your midst. Tip number three is make sure you take notes during the message portion of the service. It just helps you to follow along and be distraction free. And tip number four, these kind of all have changed over the weeks, but try not to have any other distractions in your home. You know, if you have the TV on, you know, go ahead and turn that off and it will be there later. Uh, but just try to keep all your focus into this so that it actually feels like you are a part of the service. We'll make sure we'll be starting things off in just a few moments. We cannot wait to have you worship with us. Well, we're about to get things started off with our worship team, so we're going to go ahead and pray first before we get into worship. Dear Lord Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity that we get to be able to worship you, God, uh, on this Easter Sunday as, Lord, you have risen. Lord, we ask that as we worship from our homes, that, God, that you'd be present, that you'd be in our midst, and that, God, that we would just be able to know that you were near with us. God, we're trusting that you're going to do amazing things this morning, and we cannot wait to hear what it is that you have to say to each and every one of us. God, we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's worship Lakeshore. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Welcome to Lakeshore Community Church. We're so glad that you joined with us this morning. He is alive, amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive.
place Free at last, meaning face to face I am yours, Jesus, you are mine And this joy, perfect peace Earthly pain finally will cease Celebrate, Jesus is alive
some amazing worship for sure from our worship team. Now, just really quick as we continue on in our service, we wanted just to be able to share a couple of testimonies with you. We had sent out an email early on uh, this past week, kind of just asking if you guys would want to go ahead and share your testimony with us. So we have a few testimonies that we want to go ahead to show you just to hopefully encourage you. Hi, Lakeshore. Hey, hey. We just want to wish you a happy Easter. Happy Easter. Um, my name is Lauren, this is my husband Gideon, and I attended Lakeshore for 12 years, and now this is our first year married, and we live in Grimsby, Ontario, and we attend Lake Mount Worship Center. And it has been a blast and a half, if I may <laughs> say so myself. We have seen God at work all over our lives this year. Um, in February, we were let out of our lease early, and we were able to move into this beautiful home that um, God just totally provided to us, and we are loving it. And God's been providing also in our workplaces, um, just a good, thriving workplace for Lauren, where she's experienced some promotions already early in her career there. Um, and at Lake Mount Worship Center, Lake Mount is just buzzing and it's humming along and it's just going really, really good seeing God's hand at work. Mm -hmm. So I do miss my Lakeshore Church family and we hope you're doing well. Praying blessing on you guys the year ahead. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hi, I'm Eric. And I'm Marita. And we are excited today to celebrate Easter together. And we really believe God has been faithful to us over these many years. When I was 18, I came to the Lord from a Mennonite background. 
and God changed my religion to a relationship with Jesus. Easter has has a great deal of meaning to both of us this year. We really we celebrate the risen, our risen Lord because of um, His faithfulness to us. This past year, I've lost my mom, and we've had some health issues in the family, and I have had some personal issues and have had surgery, which the Lord totally took me through, and I mm -hmm. felt His presence every step of the way, um, and He's just awesome. And uh, so we have a lot to praise Him for this year, and we know He's real and, um, and personal. Easter is a great time as well for us to to reflect on the past, to reflect on how God has been faithful over the years in our lives, in our marriage, and now we're coming up to 35 years. Our church family means a lot to us as we pray for protection over all of us during these difficult times. We wish everybody a wonderful Easter and a time of celebration for our risen King. Hi there, my name is Jesse Tolton. I have been attending Lakeshore Community Church for one year. I have been a registered nurse for 16 years, working in critical care in London, Ontario, at Victoria Hospital, and more recently at Blue Water Health in the ICU. Um, this is a unique time in healthcare. We're facing a global pandemic. Um, but there's lots of fears, there's lots of unknowns, anxieties are running high amongst the general public and staff. I'm just here to tell you that Jesus is alive in the workplace. We are seeing him move. Um, there are nurses praying for each other. There are support groups being started amongst staff. Um, local communities are coming in and donating their masks. Um, people in the community are sewing haircaps for us. There is discounts being given to frontline staff. Um, we are seeing Jesus present. There's a Bible verse that I have been going back to the last few weeks. It's from 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, but of power and love and of a sound mind. So that's been helping me through. Good morning, Lake Shore. Hello, we are John and Belma Young. We want to share a story with you about how Jesus is alive and working in our lives. Velma and I were recently in St. Martin on vacation. About the middle of March, we started to get and read news from Canada saying that it was time for Canadian tourists to come home. We tried to change our April 5th return flights, but we were unable to. As a result, we ended up purchasing new tickets to return to Canada on March the 24th. After this, we heard from the uh, government in St. Martin that they were going to shut down the airport on March 22nd, on the Sunday, for 30 days to all tourists and residents for flights going in and out. Um, after contacting consular services and looking for other flights, we were unable to really find any flights back to Canada. We ended up finding a return flight on Air Canada that left on Saturday the 21st of March. Um, Velma and I were blessed that we were able to get that flight and ended up um, being driven to the airport by our neighbor Lars. Um, we were really blessed being on that flight in that it was basically only two-thirds full and we were able to practice social distancing. Didn't see or contact any family coming back. After we got back the next day, we heard from Lars, and he informed us that he had contracted COVID-19. Velma and I were really blessed by the fact that uh, the Lord protected us, and we did not contract that virus. We have now completed our mandatory 14-day uh, quarantine, and uh, are still very healthy at this point. And we are very happy to report that Lars is now well. Happy Easter. Yeah, my name is uh, Rod Stone. Uh, I want to take this uh, opportunity to, uh, to thank uh, Lakeshore Community Church for, for giving me the, the opportunity to share my testimony. I was brought up, uh, my dad was uh, Salvation Army and, and my mom was uh, Pentecostal, so I was brought up in sort of a mixed uh, 
faith family, but th that was good. Um, I uh, went to college uh, in Newfoundland, went to school and college in Newfoundland, and moved up here after college, moved up to Toronto. Um, uh, I was worked for a little while, but in, in my mid-20s, uh, God was moving in my heart. Just uh, I just felt the need to, to begin to clean up my, uh, my life. So during that time, a pastor from a local church, uh, Parkway Baptist Church, reached out to where we were living and uh, invited me to the church. I went there and got baptized. Um, so that was just a wonderful move of God to work in my life during that time. In, in Toronto, I finally found a, a wife, uh, got married. And after marriage, uh, we uh, decided to uh, buy a home in Whitby. So we moved out to Whitby in 1995. Then we decided we needed a change and we uh, bought a home up in Wasaga Beach and we moved up there in 2008. Lived there for about uh, six years. Uh, during that time I was diagnosed with prostate cancer um, and um, didn't really have any treatment in what they call watchful waiting. In 2014 we sold the home and, we, and I moved back with Trevor to Whitby uh, to finish his schooling. During that time I had treatment uh, for the for the cancer and thank God the treatment was successful and it was cured. God, uh, the doctors tell me that it was cured. So I was just a wonderful, a wonderful miracle. I'm so thankful to God for that. And now I'm strong and in, in good health. I want to thank God that he led me to a beautiful community of believers uh, uh, at Lakeshore Community Church. Um, uh, I, I've been looking for a place to worship ever since moving out here in 2018. God led me uh, to this uh, beautiful community and I'm so thankful for that. You know, I'm so thankful th for the uh, excellent pastoral ministries, for the ministry of the inimitable Pastor Troy with his wonderful gift of humor. I'm s it's just wonderful. And also Pastor Kevin with his gift of grace, wisdom, and, and song, his music. And I'm also thankful for Pastor Jonathan. I'm so thankful for his ministry, uh, ministry of the, in me, the media ministry that God has given him, and also in the in the youth ministry. So I'm looking forward to great things uh, ahead. So um, again, I'm I'm so thankful, uh, you know, that uh, God will continue to bless us here. And uh, thanks again. Well, weren't those some amazing testimonies? We hope that they were a blessing to you and that God was able to actually say something to you uh, through those. We hope that you're still hopeful and trusting that God is still in the move today and he's still doing amazing things. Well, I'm going to hand it back over to our worship team as we continue to worship together. Forever to the 
faithful, for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not need, shall not fade. By His blood and by His name, in His reign of I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me.
Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose. We're raised to new life as we put our faith and confidence in you. We love you, Jesus, and we give you thanks. In your strong name, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It is Easter, and we're so glad you've chosen to join us. I hope you've been having a great morning. Hey, have any of the kids out there been hunting for Easter eggs? I heard a story about a little boy. He woke up on an Easter morning. There was Easter eggs all over the house and into the backyard. He was running from room to room and up and down the stairs and out the door. At the end of it, he was exhausted. <laughs> exhausted. Okay. It's Easter, and the testimony of Scripture tells us that Jesus is alive. That that first Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead. The tomb is empty. And today we serve a risen and living Savior. I want to talk today about the power of testimony. You have a testimony. You are a testimony. Our text today, if you want to follow along in the Bible, I'm going to be reading from John chapter 20. I'll give you a minute to find that while I mention one of the most memorable personal testimonies of all time. It goes way back to the 1980s. The 1980s, and it's from the world of business, there was a television commercial. Uh, the young folks out there probably aren't going to know this or remember this, but some of the older folks you might remember, a fellow by the name of Victor Kayam. He created one of the simplest and most memorable commercials of all time. He stood in front of a camera and said, I loved it so much, I bought the company. I wonder if anyone can tell me what product he was selling. His name was Victor Kayam. And the curious thing about this story is Victor recorded this same commercial in 15 languages. He wanted people all over the world to say the, see the exact same message. I loved it so much, I bought the company. Well, the company was called Remington. 
Anyone guess what it is? It was the Remington electric razor. That's right. Shaving his face with this razor one time. He liked it and he bought the company. That's the power of a great testimony to believe in something so much that it changes your life. And that's the text we're going to look at today. It's John chapter 20, and we're starting at verse 1. The Bible reads, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. And she said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. As we look at this text, John chapter 20, verses 1 and 2, which tells us it was women that first came to the tomb and found it empty. This is a powerful witness and a bold move by the gospel writers. Because at that time, women were not allowed to vote or hold property in Rome. And according to the rabbinical Jewish teachings, women could not even testify in court. Women in that era had no voice at all. Ladies, aren't you glad things have changed so much? But for the gospel writers to say the first ones to witness the empty tomb were women was either a very bold move or it was simply the truth. There are people who believe the gospels were made up, that someone fabricated them as if uh, a grandpapa telling stories around the campfire. I remember when. But we believe in the truth of the Bible. We believe that we have the word of God as it happened. I'll tell you a story about fabricating a story. When we visited Florida this past winter, Kathleen and I went to this uh, uh, stone ruins and uh, we read up on it. We took some pictures there and it was an old building that someone had started a story in the 1800s that it was actually a chapel built by Christopher Columbus himself. That when Chris Columbus came to Florida, he built this chapel to worship God. Well, the story was made up, but it circled around. And in fact, that actual property today is on a road called Mission Road perhaps relating back to the same story of this chapel. But finally, in the mid-1900s, somebody said, that's not the truth. We have some documentation. It was actually a sugar mill that employed slaves and was burnt to the ground one day during a slave uprising. That's what happens when people start their own story. But we believe the gospel record is a true account of what happened at Easter. And that these women finding the tomb report the story to the rest of the disciples. So back to John chapter 20. And let's skip down to verse 15. Where Jesus, risen from the dead, walks up to talk to Mary in the garden. And he says, John chapter 20, verse 15. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. I love this part of the story. All it took was one word. All it took was for Jesus to say the name Mary. Remember, Mary is the one that was seated at Jesus' feet when the, when the crowd came into the home of Mary and Martha and Martha's working in the kitchen and getting everything ready. Mary is the one that came and sat and listened at Jesus' feet. She knew his voice. She especially knew his voice when he said her name. And all it took was for him to say her name. And there's something so beautiful and so personal about that. I believe God wants to have a personal relationship with each of us. In fact, I have read in some study that this uh, Aramaic word Rabboni means my rabbi, my teacher. It's a personal relationship. Many of us experience God personally in our own lives. 
and we want to testify. We want to share that story with others. And they go, ah, that's fine for you, but it's not for me. Well, God wants to have this personal experience with each one of us. If you're here watching today and you've never had a relationship with God, I want to challenge you today. Give God a try. So we pick up the reading. John chapter 20, let's let's go now to verse 18. It says, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So here we have this meeting of the disciples. John chapter 20, verses 18 to 20. It's the first day of the week. Most of them are there. They've gathered together. And suddenly there is Jesus in their midst. And they were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Notice they weren't overjoyed when Mary told them he was alive. They weren't ready to believe her story. They needed to see it for themselves. Aren't we all like that? We need to see it for ourselves. When something sounds too good to be true, we've told ourselves it probably is. Instead of taking someone else's word for it, we want to see it for ourselves. I remember just last June, when our daughter Lauren was getting married and we were setting up on the Friday night for the reception. There was, there was all kinds of work to be done getting ready for the wedding reception. And the Raptors were playing in the NBA Finals. Somebody had the TV on in the other room. And so we're working away. There's so much to do. And somebody would come in and they'd give a report. The Raptors are winning by a basket or the Raptors are losing. Or, the game's tied and... and as it got closer and closer to the end, I wasn't going to take somebody else's word for it. I uh, made an excuse and uh, I slipped out and I went in the other room to make sure I'm going to watch this game with my own eyes. I want to see the end. I got to see it for myself. Have you ever had a moment like that? You can't take someone else's word for it. You need to see it for yourself. That's what the disciples went through in this upper room moment. Mary told them, I've seen the Lord, but they're like, no, no, I got to see it myself. When they saw Jesus, they're overjoyed. Awesome story. But one person was missing this church service, a fellow by the name of Thomas. This is just a good reminder to all of us. Never miss church, all right? So John chapter 20, verse 24, it says, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, One of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Just like the rest of them, Thomas wanted to see it for himself. Now, we rip on Thomas a little bit, but remember, the disciples felt the same way about the testimony of Mary. They were overjoyed when they saw Jesus. Now it's Thomas's turn. Can you imagine what that week was like for Thomas? What thoughts must have been spinning around in his head? All of the other disciples have said, we've seen him. But Thomas, he can't believe it. He's in a quarantine of unbelief if i can use that phrase quarantine is a word we're using quite often now he was in a house of doubt he was in a cell of skepticism everybody else believed jesus was alive but for that whole week he was sitting on his doubt no this can't be i wonder today if you're in a similar situation Have you ever been in in a place of doubt? Though others around you believed, you were doubting. Have you ever been in an isolation of consternation? Others say Jesus is alive. 
and I want to believe, but I just don't know. But then there comes an amazing second chance for Thomas. It's a whole week later, but the following Sunday, we pick up the reading in verse 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I love this scripture. It's for you and for me. Jesus says to Thomas, You are blessed because you've seen me and now you believe. But here's where he's talking about us when he says, Blessed are those who've not seen and yet believed. For us, we weren't there. We didn't see Jesus walk into the room with the nail scars in his hands, and yet we've chosen to believe. This is an awesome scripture for you and I. It reminds us that we live by faith and not by sight. This was a great day for Thomas. It took a week to come around The first Sunday, he wasn't there. He didn't see Jesus when the others did. They may have been talking about it all week, celebrating, swapping stories, sharing their feelings about it. But then you got Thomas the whole time living in the town of too good to be true. And there it is. Blessed are those who've not seen and yet believe. The verse I just quoted a moment ago, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we live by faith, not by sight. The Bible calls us to a life of faith. I want to tell you a story about what we see versus what we believe. It was 13 years ago. We were still living in Stratford. We were just about to make the move to Bright's Grove. And we came home one day with ice cream cones. It's always a good day when you come home with ice cream cones. And there was a commotion down our street. A woman in her late 30s had collapsed in the backyard. We knew her. Uh, One of our children played with one of her children often. We came to the house before the ambulance arrived. And uh, as the ambulance attendants came and and, uh, put her on the stretcher, uh, I heard one of them say, she has no pulse. They began to take her to the hospital. I jumped in the car with this woman's father. By this time, he had arrived at the house. And we jumped in the car together and headed to the hospital. And I watched him call a family member on the phone while we were in the car. And he started to weep, and he got hysterical. And he said, she's gone, she's dead. And all the way there, I just remember whispering a prayer that though all seems lost, maybe, just maybe, there's reason to hope. Maybe we can hold on to faith even in spite of what our eyes tell us. By the time we arrived at the hospital, her heart was beating. They were treating her in eMERGE, and she lived. It looked like the end. It looked like there was no hope. To our eyes, it was over. But we are called to live by faith, not by sight. You might be thinking, then maybe your life is at a dead end. Maybe there's no way out. Maybe there doesn't seem to be an answer. There's no hope for a certain situation in your life. Imagine Thomas holding on to his unbelief while all the others were saying, no, Thomas, no, Jesus is alive. If you're watching at home today and you've never taken the step to trust in Jesus, to say, okay, I want to live by faith that Jesus is alive and that God is at work in the world today. If you've never taken that leap of faith, I challenge you today to say, all right, Lord, if you're hearing me now, I ask you to work in my life. I want to know you. 
I want to believe. And you know what? I believe God will speak into your life. I believe the testimony of Scripture is reliable and true and that we can stand upon it and believe God for it, that he wants to do amazing things in your life. We sang a song earlier with the whole band up here, a song that said, the greatest day in history. The greatest day in history was that first Easter Sunday when Jesus stepped out of the tomb. The stone rolled away and out he came, victor over death and sin and the grave. I believe this could be a great day in history, too. It could be a great day in your life if you're ready to turn your life over to him and say, Lord, I want to begin living the life of faith. And maybe there's people watching today and you are living the life of faith. Maybe you attend this church even. I want to challenge you to go deeper in your faith, to believe God when others around you are the Thomases. Oh, it's not. I can't believe it till I see it myself. Oh, I can't I can't have faith for that. That's too much to believe for. I want to challenge you to believe with great faith today that God's at work in your life. We are praying for some people in our church whose families are challenged by COVID. We're praying for miracles in some lives this week. We're praying for God to work in our community, that he would draw people's hearts to him. And as a closing prayer today, I'd like to pray for you. And what God is doing in your life, that rather than walking by sight only, God would open our eyes to walk by faith. I'd like to lead you in a prayer today, celebrating Easter, the risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the opportunity for us to begin the life of faith. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for the greatest day in history, that you are victorious over sin and death. And you call us to live the life of faith. I want to pray today for families in our church who are going through a tough go because of COVID-19. Some folks that have actually uh, had the symptoms and are battling this, this virus. Lord, I pray for recovery. For other families who may have even lost a loved one through this time. Lord, for your peace, comfort, and consolation to come to our hearts. And I want to pray for people today who are at the edge of faith. They're about to make that leap into trusting you with their life. Lord, I pray they'd simply say, Dear Jesus, I offer you my life today. I invite you to come be Lord of my life and lead me on the walk of faith. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are at work in the world today. Though there may be some dark times, there may be some shadows, we're trusting our God, and we celebrate all that Easter means to us. Lord, may you forever receive all the glory and honor due to your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. Our band is going to come back, and we're going to do one more song for you. God bless you. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon ground
began to shake. The stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated.
Lakeshore, thank you so much for joining us on this Easter Sunday. We're hoping and trusting that this service was indeed a blessing to you. We have just a few announcements before you go, and uh, go ahead and write these down in your calendars or whatever it is that you need to do to remember them. Number one, make sure you keep a lookout for our Tuesday evening chat. It's a live stream with uh, Pastor Troy, Pastor Kevin, and I, where we're going to go ahead and chat, uh, share a devotional, just hang out, and that's at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. Senior highs, make sure you're on the lookout for Two Minute Tuesdays. Those will be posted on Tuesdays. We also have Senior High on Wednesday nights, Junior High on Thursday nights, as well as a church chat on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Now, some of you are curious about giving. Uh, giving is still available, and you can do so by e-transfer. You have to just go ahead and e-transfer uh, to lccdonations at kojako.net. That's lccdonations at kojako.net. It is safe and secure, and it goes straight from your account to the church account. There's no middleman. It's super safe and super easy. Anyway, Lakeshore, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope that you were blessed, and we cannot wait to see you next week. <laughs>